I've gone from Boy Scout to D Malay to Solo Wiccan to OTO Initiate to Pagan Priest to Atheist. All in a search for more in life. In the history of the natural world to the supernatural, I found many weird things. But just because I don't know what it is doesn't make it supernatural. While the true heart of science is to always question even yourself. In the end, I have become an objective atheist. I am an atheist, but I want there to be more. Welcome to Damn Weird. And in this, I'm going to attempt to organize my collective thoughts on uh, various unusual events and things and people that have occurred and things I've studied. Just a way to organize them here onto YouTube for me. Now we're going to start with some of the easier things simply because we need kind of a foundation for our studies, for something to look at. These are things that maybe shouldn't exist, but do. The Komodo Dragon. This one has a lot of information available online, but I, but I cover it because it survived through the same periods that a lot of cryptids that we'll later be covering are said to be from. Yet people say they cannot exist. So how about what I see as the origins of many of the dragon stories with the mighty land crocodile? and its larger relatives from the past. To the natives of the Komodo Islands, it is referred to as the land crocodile or a giant monitor. These are translated, of course, from their native tongues because I would only butcher the pronunciation. The Komodo dragon is a large species of lizard found in Indonesia and islands of Kom Komodo, Rinca, Flores, and Gili Motong, and Pedar. A member of the monitor lizard family, Varan Varanidae. It is the largest living species of lizard, growing to a maximum length of 10 feet in rare cases and weighing up to approximately 150 pounds. Komodo dragons were first documented by Europeans in 1910. First two live Komodo dragons to arrive in Europe were exhibited in the reptile house at London Zoo when it opened in 1927. The Komodo dragon was the driving factor for an expedition to the Komodo Islands by W. Douglas Burden in 1926. After returning with 12 preserved specimens and two live ones, this expedition provided the inspiration for the 1933 movie King Kong. It was also Burden who coined the common name Komodo dragon. Three of his specimens were stuffed and are still on display in the American Museum of Natural History. The Dutch, realizing the limited number of individuals in the wild, outlawed sport hunting and heavily limited the number of individuals taken for scientific study. Collecting expeditions ground to a halt with the occurrence of World War II, not resuming until the 1950s and 60s. The Offenberg family stayed on the Komodo Islands for 11 months in 1969. During their stay, they tagged more than 50 Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons avoid encounters with humans, although there are cases of unprovoked Komodo dragons attacking or preying on humans. Most of the reports are either not reputable or caused by defensive bites. Only a few cases are truly a result of unprovoked attacks by an in abnormal individuals which lost their fear towards humans. That's what happens when you move into their terrain. Volcano activity, earthquakes, loss of habitat, fire, loss of prey due to poaching, tourism and illegal poaching of the dragons themselves have all contributed to the vulnerable state of the Komodo dragon. Recent research suggests the large size of the Komodo dragon may be better understood as a representative of a relic population of a very large varanid lizards that once lived across Indonesia and Australia, most of which, along with other megafauna, died out after the Plasticines. Fossils have been found in Australia dating to greater than 3.8 million years and its body remained stable on Flores, one of the handful of Indonesian islands where it is currently found, a time marked by major fauna turnover, extinction of the island's megafauna, and the arrival of the early hominids. Early hominids could have seen these dragons. Racial memory? 
As a result of their size, these lizards dominate the ecosystems in which they live. Komodo dragons hunt and ambush prey. It has been claimed that they have a venomous bite. There are two glands. These glands have been shown to secrete an anticoagulant. They have been seen on MRIs. Komodo dragons group behaviors in hunting is exceptional in the reptile world. The diet of the big Komodo dragons mainly consists of deer, though it also eats considerable amounts of carrion. Komodo dragons are occasionally attack humans in the area of West Mangarare Regency, where they live in Indonesia. I'm sure I got that one wrong. It also has a long, yellow, deeply forked tongue. The Komodo dragon's skin is reinforced by armored scales, a sort of natural chain mail. This rugged hide makes Komodo dragon's skin poorly suited for making into leather, probably protecting them from that. To catch out of reach of prey, the Komodo dragon may stand on its hind legs and use its tail for support. As it matures, its claws are used primarily as weapons, as its great size makes climbing impractical. For shelter, the Komodo dragon digs holes that can measure from 3.3 to 9.8 feet wide with its powerful forelimbs and claws. Because of its large size and habit of sleeping in these burrows, it is able to conserve body heat throughout the night and minimize its basking periods the morning after. The Komodo dragon hunts in the afternoon, but stays in the shade during the hottest part of the day. These special resting places, usually located on ridges with cool sea breezes, are marked with droppings and are cleared of the vegetation. The Komodo dragon's diet is wide-ranging. Sometimes they consume human corpses, digging them up from their shallow graves. This habit of raiding graves caused villagers of Komodo to move their graves from the sandy to the clay grounds and pile rocks on top of them to deter the lizards. Research in 2013 states they actually have surprisingly good mouth hygiene. After they are done feeding, they will spend 10 to 15 minutes lip licking and rubbing their heads in leaves to clean their mouths. Unlike people have been led to believe they do not have chunks of rotting flesh from their meals in their teeth cultivating bacteria. The observation of prey dying of sepsis would then be explained by the natural instinct of water buffaloes who are not native to the islands where the Komodo dragon lives to run in the water when attacked. The warm feces filled water could have then caused the infection. The study used samples from 16 captive dragons, 10 adults and 6 neonates from 3 US zoos. Young Komodo dragons spend much of their first few years in trees where they are relatively safe from predators, including the cannibalistic adults, as juvenile dragons make up 10% of their diet. The habit of cannibalism may be advantageous in sustaining the large size of adults, as medium-sized prey on the island is rare. When young approach a kill, they roll around in feces matter and rest in intestines of eviscerate animals to deter these hungry adults. A do dragons make approximately eight to nine years to mature and may live for up to 30 years. In 2013, total population in the wild was assessed as 3,222 individuals, declining to 3,092 in 2014 and 3,014 in 2015. Population remains relatively stable on the bigger islands, Komodo and Rinka, but decreased on the smaller islands such as Nusa Kod and Gil Motang, likely due to diminishing prey availability. On Pedar, a former population of Komodo dragons became extinct, of which the last individuals were seen in 1975. It is widely assumed that the Komodo dragons diet died out on Pedar after a strong decline of the population of large ungulate prey for which poaching was most likely responsible. So it survived everything nature had until we came along. Not an uncommon story. I wonder why so many things hide. Thank you. And have a nice day.